Thanks for clicking. My name is Mark Mitchell. I'm a mortgage broker here in London, Ontario. Today I want to talk about the upcoming announcement from the Bank of Canada where on Wednesday they will make their uh, rate decision as to whether or not they're going to raise interest rates. This comes on the heels of the Federal Reserve announcing last week that they are starting to look into when it will be time to start tapering. The Bank of Canada started its tapering program in April and it's widely expected that they might continue to reduce the amount of bond, buyer, uh, bond buying um, or quantitative easing that, they're, that, that they've been doing since the, the pandemic hit uh, back in 2020. What the Bank of Canada decides to do vis-a-vis -vis tapering and its quantitative easing program will mark uh, the beginning of, a, of signs for whether or not they plan to raise interest rates in the next coming months and years ahead. While not directly related to the price of interest rates, whether or not the government is, whether or not the bank is continuing its quantitative easing program really acts as a good indicator of how well it thinks the economy is doing. So the bank easing its quantitative, quantitative easing program will serve as sort of a, the beginning to when you know interest rates will probably start to go up. Um, it's at least the, the, the beginning of it. So what I want to do today is briefly go over the quantitative easing program that the Bank of Canada does have in place and um, explain what is quantitative easing and what is tapering. I then want to do a brief analysis on what's expected of the Bank of Canada to do come Wednesday's meeting or very soon in the future and what that will mean for, for interest rates in the future. So what is quantitative easing? Well, according to Investopedia, quantitative easing is a form of unconventional monetary policy in which a central bank purchases longer term securities from the open market in order to increase the money supply and encourage lending and investment. It also expands the central bank's balance sheet. Okay, thanks, that clears it all up. Actually, it doesn't. Um, most people probably don't know what quantitative easing is or what tapering is. Um, even though it's become wide, widely used, especially since the 2008 financial crisis. So quantitative easing is a way to inject money into the economy uh, that the Bank of Canada uses without actually having the government spend money directly. There are two main forms of QE, quantitative easing, that the Bank of Canada has done. The first one being bond purchases. So by bond purchases, I mean, when the government wants to raise money, they sell bonds to the banks. And then that's where the, that's how the government can borrow money. Technically, it's directly from the banks. The banks then hold these bonds, which is a promise from the government of Canada. When the Bank of Canada buys those bonds from the bank, it is taking the, the bonds out of the, out of the hands of the banks and giving the banks more money that they can lend out. By doing this, they inject money into the economy to get the, the banks to lend out money, thereby stimulating economic growth. So the Bank of Canada buys the, buys the bonds from the banks in order to get money out, out into the economy to get the banks to lend. So because the banks are getting money at such a cheaper rate, they are able to, or at such a low rate from the Bank of Canada, they are able to lend money at a much less, at a much lower rate. Since they lend at a lower rate, people are more likely to borrow, and borrow they have. As we've seen in 2020 and 2021 in the housing market, massive loans have been made to cover the, the huge upsurge in our housing prices. This was largely made possible by low interest rates, which were made possible by the Bank of Canada buying the bonds formerly held by the banks. In addition to the bond buying program, the Bank of Canada has also been buying mortgage-backed securities from the banks. You probably have heard mortgage-backed securities uh, largely during the 2008 financial crisis in the United States, and it's been they've played a large, uh, predominant role in popular cultures in movies such as The Big Short. Mortgage-backed securities are a collection of mortgages all rolled into one. So, say we have two billion dollars worth of mortgages, it gets rolled into one mortgage-backed security that the banks have all put together via, they, they put it all together into one security, all $2 billion of it. They take that mortgage-backed security, so it's a security backed by all those mortgages, 
and they sell it off to the Bank of Canada. So the Bank of Canada now technically is holding on to those mortgages. And the banks have more money that they can lend out for more mortgages. Again, the banks are no longer responsible for the, the money or the loans in the mortgage-backed securities as it's being held by the Bank of Canada. Now the banks can lend out more money. And so between those two, uh, the bond buying program on the Bank of Canada's part and buying the mortgage-backed securities, buying all of our mortgages, is how the Bank of Canada used, uh, is how the Bank of Canada's quantitative easing program helped us through the pandemic by getting money into the system through the banks. Yet the government did spend quite a bit of money, as we know, through such programs like CERB and CRB and various programs for small businesses but a large portion of the money that helped get us through the pandemic was done through the Bank of Canada and the private sector. Done through these, this bond buying, this mortgage-backed security program and quantitative easing as a whole. So now that we know what quantitative easing is, what's tapering? Well, tapering is the reverse of that. So it's the, the Bank of Canada stopping its bond buying program or slowing it down at least bit by bit. It already did start its tapering program in April of this year, as it slowed down its bond buying program from $3 billion a week to $2 billion a week. So that kind of gives you an idea of how much the Bank of Canada was buying prior to that th throughout 2020 and 2021. Now, the bank is also considering furthering its tapering decision, which will, we don't know by how much yet, but it is going to start to it's going to start to hold back how much money it's spending and how much of those bonds that it's actually buying from the banks. Okay, so the Bank of Canada and actually the Federal Reserve just announced that they're thinking of doing it too, soon as well. So they're going to stop injecting money in the in the economy. So the next question is, well, why are they doing that? They're doing that because of the strength of the economy with the vaccine doses coming out and it looks like inflation is starting to take hold. The, the the bank is seeing that the economy doesn't need so much support to help prop it up the way it did when so much of our workforce was, was off and we weren't really sure what was going on. So the idea is that now that the banks can actually stand on their own and fend for themselves, that we can start to go back to a bit of normality where the, the printing presses, I suppose, the Bank of Canada isn't injecting so much money into into our economy to help prop it up. So that's, that's a good sign for the, eco the economy, at least somewhat, because we're going back to semi-normal uh, semi economic operation that we haven't seen since the beginning of the pandemic. And that's why I say that this is a precursor to the raising of interest rates. The interest rates have been held artificially low now since the beginning of 2020. Normally, in normal economic times, if the government wants to, if the Bank of Canada wants to spur economic growth or spur economic activity, it'll lower, it'll lower interest rates. But interest rates were already so low that that wasn't really a factor that they could just solely depend on. They had to move into the quantitative easing program as well, which as we saw, did help, did help uh, spur economic activity. So they're pulling back that the, they're pulling back the, the QE program. Well, that's the first step in letting the economy function normally. The second step is to see if inflation continues to take hold and if we can sustain some economic growth and uh, inflation starts going up and up and incre increases up and up, then they're going to step in and they're going to raise interest rates just as a matter of, of keeping the economy from reaching hyperinflation, which you've probably seen in the headlines in the past few weeks. People are getting, especially the central banks, are getting more and more worried about. So. When you're thinking about whether or not inflation is going to go up and whether or not interest rates are going to go up to fight that inflation, there's other signs you can look for. And a lot of it is based in a, a big sign that, that we can see this as the precursor to interest rates going up is what the bank does with its quantitative easing program and how much support it thinks that the economy needs. So in the next coming weeks and months and even years into 2022 and 2023, Take a, keep a close eye on what the Federal Reserve does and what the Bank of Canada does and really what the rest of the central banks do. Uh, Bentil, um, Bentil, the Bank of England, uh, the European, the EU central bank. See what they do with their, uh, 
with their tapering programs and their quantitative easing programs. So whether or not they start to think the economies can and can function on their own. If they start to think they got the economies can function on their own, then functioning on your own is a level of normality. And these interest rates that we've been seeing for the past year and a half are not normal. So they'll have to go back to normal as well, as long as the economy is functioning under normal operation. And normal operation means no quantitative easing. If you like this video and do want further updates, as I do plan on doing one after Wednesday's rate announcement, please do click like and subscribe, and you'll be notified and we'll have more updates as they come out. Thank you.